April is School Library Month, uh, and so in celebration of that, this week's book bite is from the book um, Property of the Rebel Librarian. Uh, and this is the story of June, um, whose parents are pretty strict. They they monitor what she watches on TV and what kind of movies she watches and, and what books she reads. Um, and they find a book that she has checked out from her middle school library uh, that they feel is inappropriate. And so that kind of starts things rolling and the parents form a committee with other parents and they end up going through the whole middle school library and removing any books that they feel like are inappropriate, um, which really upsets the students. Uh, and so June and a few, of her, uh, a few of her friends start an underground um, kind of rebel library, which is where the name comes from, um, where they secretly share books amongst themselves that they can no longer get uh, in the library. Chapter one, you're reading, you're going to read a lot about me and the things I've done. Most of it's true. I can't help that, not that I'd want to. I would do the exact same thing all over again if I had the chance. It's like when you read a sad book for the second time. You know the moment is coming and you know it's going to make you cry, but that doesn't stop you. You read it anyway because you love the story. So take your time. I'll just be sitting here grounded for all eternity while you read about the moments when everything fell together and apart. They're all here, every last one. The front door swings open after I walk home from school right on schedule, except today, dad holds my copy of The Makings of a Witch. I grin up, I grin up at him, but he doesn't return my smile. The flush of rising blood pressure snakes across dad's pale face to his ears. It looks like he raked his hand over his light, br light brown hair a million times while pacing in front of the window. That's what he did when they finally let Kate go out on her first date. Back and forth, back and forth, right in front of the window until she showed up on the doorstep. Except she made curfew, and then the show was over. This one is just getting started, and I have no idea why. Dad signals to the empty spot by Mom on the love seat. Would you care to explain this, he says, holding up the novel. I shrug. Um, it's a book? He stares at me through his tortoiseshell glasses until I look away. Yes, one that we don't approve of. I don't understand. They've always been okay with the books I've read. I squirm on the stiff cushions. Dad, it's just a book. I... What concerns me more than anything, he taps the barcode sticker, is that it's from the Dogwood Middle Library of all places. The grandfather clock ticks away the sounds while I squirm, ticks away the seconds while I squirm. I can't watch TV or use the family computer without someone looking over my shoulder, but books have always been safe. My mom cross-stitched. Readers are winners on a couch pillow to prove it. Dad, I... No buts, June. You know the rules. Dad is president of the PTSA, and he keeps his thumb on everything at Dogwood Middle, especially me doesn't matter that I'm 12 and have never ever given dad a real reason to worry. Did anyone ask me to the school dance last week? Nope. Why would they when he'd follow us the whole time? The best part of dad's day is hassling my teachers about posting my grades online. Easy to do because he works from home as a tech consultant. It's so embarrassing. Sixth grade was bad enough, but things got 10 times worse in August when Kate left for college. Dad gently taps the novel against his knee. Missing kids, witches, it's too scary for you. No, it isn't. I like creepy stuff. If you just... No, this is the sort of thing that won't happen again. Understand, June, it's our job to protect you. It would be nice if you'd meet us halfway. Until you do, you're grounded. No TV, no phone, no internet. What? I've never, ever been grounded before. You heard me. Rules are rules. Mom shakes her head with disappointment. Shame creeps up my face, making me flush red like I always do when I'm upset. I want to crawl under the couch. Was it wrong of me to read that book? I'll return it after school tomorrow, Mom says. Oh no, tomorrow is our last game of the season and Mom will be there anyway because she runs the uniform closet for our marching band. I can't believe this is happening. Poor Miss Bradshaw, the librarian, is going to get a visit from my mom, and then there won't be a hole big enough for me to hide in. What have I done? I slip out the door with a breakfast bar in one hand and my house key in the other. 
Emma stands at the curb, squinting into the camera on her phone and putting on her lip gloss her mom won't let her wear. It sparkles on her tan skin. Emma has her reasons for glamming it up, and they're all in the band. The middle school honors band started marching with the high school a few years ago. Their band was so small, they decided they need 7th and 8th graders to look bigger. So this is the first year Emma and I get to take our instruments across the parking lot for 6th grade after school practices and football games. It's been two whole months since I started honors band, and it's, I still get that little flutter in my stomach when I walk over to the high school. I wonder if that will ever go away. I grin. That's a great color on you. I swipe it. I swiped it for her from the stash Kate had abandoned under our bathroom sink when she left for college and stopped answering my calls. Emma blots her lips and spritzes herself with prettiest peach body spray. Nice dress. Thanks. It has pockets, I say, holding out the size of the green fabric as we start the long walk to school. It's maybe two miles to the middle school from here. Too close for the buses to pick up and not far enough for my parents to drop their routines and drive me. What's the occasion? Emma takes in my frizz-free hair and the necklace Kate gave me last Christmas and smiles a knowing smile. You totally have a crush on Graham, don't you? My shoulders stiffen. No, like my parents would let me date an eighth grader or anyone. You like him. Stop it. If you say so, Emma shrugs, you're the one fainting everywhere. It was one time I sent her a sidelong glare. I locked my knees, okay? It was at band camp in July, my first ever band camp, actually, since sixth graders aren't allowed to audition for honors band. We were standing in formation, and the next thing I knew, all I could see was blue sky and Graham's face. He caught me in the last moment before my head hit the pavement. Everyone flocked around me, but the truth is, he held me a moment too long, past the moment of impact, past the chorus, of are you okay? And then he winked and said, nice of you to drop in. I groaned, that's the worst joke I've ever heard. He squinted at me. Uh Uh-oh, how hard did you hit your head? I didn't hit my head. He grinned, it's the only explanation, he said as he pulled me to my feet. Or trust me, you'd be laughing. Then he turned around and walked back to his spot like he was king of the universe. My mind turned to jelly and I stood there trying to think of a comeback. You know how some people become so unbelievably perfect they can't possibly be real? Graham is like that, always has been. It's like he's so sure of each step and he's a total flirt. He's tall and blonde and his closet is full of designer plaid button downs. Put him in a white put him on a white horse and he'd be galloping in the surf in a cologne ad. I could never be the girl on the horse. I once lost my balance on a carousel. So no, I don't have a crush on Graham. He's the boy I look at a second too long, nothing more. I change the subject and fill Emma in on everything with my parents, ending with, and mom will be there later today to ruin my life. In a nutshell, I leave out the part about being grounded. It's too embarrassing. Emma rolls her eyes. It's just a book. I laugh. You know how they are. Emma has slept over enough times to know there's a 100% chance of G-rated movies before an early bedtime. My parents probably wouldn't care, she says. I sigh and hop over the broken pieces of sidewalk where tree roots have pushed up through the concrete. Yeah, I say, I know. Her parents aren't nearly as bad as mine are, but they don't have to be. Dad keeps constant tabs on both of us. Usually I don't mind that much. I don't really get in trouble. But being grounded for reading? That's a new one. Oh, almost forgot. Emma digs the graveyard book out of her bag and hands it to me. You're done already? Yeah, you'll love it. Read the beginning with the lights on, though. I grin. What's the matter, Em? Getting a little scared? Emma rolls her eyes and gives my shoulder a playful shove. You'll see what I mean. Okay, okay, I'll get it back to you soon. Emma shrugs. Just keep it. Seriously? We share books all the time, but we always return them. It's yours, but you'll have to hide it from your parents because there are ghosts in it. Oh, no, not ghosts. Thanks. The houses ended at the corner and the sidewalk grows smooth again. We follow it across the street to the town square. It's the heart of everything where parades and festivals are held every time the vegetable blooms. Flowers line the sidewalk in front of all the shops, pharmacy, post office, yoga studio, and everyone's favorite, the diner. Not that I get to spend much time there. From here, Dogwood Middle is less than a mile away. 
think we'll win tonight? Anna asks when the football field comes into view. We haven't won a game since before Kate started high school. Nope, but our band is better. Like there's any question. With each step, my boots leave a trail of black scuff marks on the cement as if to say I was here. It's oddly satisfying. We stroll past Dogwood High, a two-story brick building built 40 years ago, and up to its sister building, Dogwood Middle. Groups of kids hang out on the steps and benches, laughing and talking. The familiar smell of gym floors and sloppy joes hits my nostrils as we pass through the doors to the middle school. <coughs> Excuse me. Several band members chat in the hallway, their instruments already in their hands. See you at the assembly, Emma asks as we split up to go to our lockers. Sure but I won't. I'm supposed to play flight, fight songs to rally school spirit for the big game, but they'll need to have enough pep without me. There's one place on my mind, and I should have been there 10 minutes ago. But for the first time in my life, I'm nervous about going to the library. I'd give anything not to have to tell Miss Bradshaw what's coming. When I threw open the door, Miss Bradshaw is stooped over an open box in a study carol, her long auburn curls dangling over its contents. The comforting smell of paper fills my lungs and I relax a little. Miss Bradshaw? She plucks a stack of books on the table, plunks a stack of books on the table, and glances up with a big grin on her rosy face. Good morning, June. Why does she have to look so happy to see me? She doesn't deserve what she's about to hear. Do you have a minute? She laughs. Define minute. I've got to unload these before first period. Want to give me a hand? Yeah, okay. I flip through a, th a few books I've never heard of. Holes, Lily and Duncan, Wish Tree. You'd like those, she said. I put them down, my palms begin to sweat, and my sad little breakfast gurgles in my stomach. I take a deep breath and blurt out. My parents found my copy of The Makings of a Witch and said I couldn't read it. My mom's bringing it back to you today. It's, it's bad. Her eyes fall to the book in her hand, but she isn't really looking at it. She's probably thinking of how ridiculous my family is, because that's all I'm thinking about right now. I think they're mad it was in the library because of the witches in the graveyard and the other stuff. She slaps a Dogwood Middle School library sticker on the, on the cover of the newest Percy Jackson book. But you read it. I did. Then that's that, she said with a one shoulder shrug. There's nothing I can do about it. Tell that to my parents, I sigh. They're probably going to make things difficult. I'm so sorry. I think I'm going to be sick. Miss Bradshaw attends every single one of our football games and she cheers the loudest during the halftime shows. Did you like The Makings of a Witch? I loved it. And here's the thing, it, it wasn't that scary. It kept me guessing what would happen next, but I didn't have nightmares or anything. She reached for her coffee mug on the other side of the box. Is that right? Yeah, I said quietly, it kept my eyes down, fiddling with the books on the table. You know, there's a reason I suggested it to you. She takes a slow sip of coffee, and I can feel her staring at me. We wanted to work out the details before announcing it, but the author is coming next week to talk about her book. And you can't very well help run the event if you haven't read the book, can you? I looked up at her and willed myself not to let my jaw drop. You're kidding me. She picked dogwood? We aren't exactly known for anything, really. There's an enormous pecan statue by the highway, but that's about it. It's also where cell phone service gets spotty. Try to get a bar of service to register here, and you can be waiting a long time. Her expression settles into smooth, serious lines. I don't kid about books. Ever. She nods toward a stack of flyers. Now that I'm, now I know I'm in panic mode, or I never would have missed them. The book cover is on the center with the event details listed below. I can't believe it's actually happening. This is so awesome. She hands me a small stack. Make yourself useful, would you? And of course, you'll have to swing by afterward to say hello, she winks. Can't let her leave without meeting library groupie number one. Seriously, she breaks into a huge smile. It's already been approved for fifth period next Thursday. School-wide assemblies are mandatory last time I checked. My heart sinks. There's no way it's going to happen for me. I'm not that lucky. If you say so. Don't count yourself out just yet, June, she says, gathering a sack of books into her arms. You read that one book. And one book can change everything. All right. So to find out what happens uh, with June and the author visit um, and um, what happens with the librarian, 
Um, you can check out Property of the Rebel Librarian. Um, you can order it from Bookdash and I'll deliver it to your A1 or your B1 class.